Hello, I'm Peter Kistler from Heart Rhythm TV and it's my uh, great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Felix Sagardi, um, who is Vice President of the African uh, Heart Rhythm uh, Association or, or AFRA. And as part of uh, HRS's global mission, Felix is going to educate and share some perspectives on the situation with uh, rhythm management in Africa. Yeah, thank you, Peter. I'm glad to be here to talk about AFRA, Africa Heart Rhythm Association. The association was established in January 2020 at a meeting of electrophysiologists across the continent in Nairobi, Kenya. And we are glad to have many members visiting from Africa attending the Heart Rhythm Society meeting in 2023. In Africa, the arrhythmia services have a very disparate uh, representation. We have services well established on, in North and South Africa, but the rest of the continent still needs to grow the arrhythmia services. And I appreciate the opportunity to introduce HRS community to AFRA and some of the activities that are going on in the continent. With me today is uh, Dr. Salah from Egypt and Dr. Robin uh, from Tanzania. And welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Felix, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the population that we're talking about and roughly the number of electrophysiologists? The number of electrophysiologists is, very, is varied by region. Then, for example, in Egypt, uh, they have almost 200 electrophysiologists. And in South Africa, I'm not sure the exact number, but probably close. But in countries like Tanzania, they may have, they have one. Kenya has two. And the number of EP labs are, is also very limited in certain regions and probably more present in others. So the, and that's, those are countries that have population like in Nigeria. There is no electrophysiology lab per se, and that's a population of over 200 million. Wow. And in Kenya, uh, they have two, th three functioning labs now with a population of about um, 40, 45 million people. Oh. And in Egypt, they have over 20 labs, from my understanding, right. yes. Uh, yes. So Dr. Salah, tell us a little bit about the situation yeah. in Egypt. The situation in Egypt is uh, uh, more into uh, uh, doing uh, various EB procedures. We have more than 20 uh, cartoon machine. We have almost 20 uh, airports Navex machine. We have we do cryoablation. We have a lot of uh, we have a national uh, EB program, uh, and uh, our national EB program director is Professor Mervet, one of the founders of Afra in Nairobi, K uh, Kenya. Uh, we uh, also empower the local EB uh, community and local EB uh, consultant in Africa. We visit Africa with Professor Mervet. We go there doing uh, cases uh, and uh, try to empower uh, the local uh, EB programs. So what's the access like for people to... The, uh, the, 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 uh, in Egypt. Yeah, uh, the access of the people to do the EP procedure, we have a various, we have an international insurance companies, we have uh, uh, the uh, governmental support and governmental insurance, we have uh, the health care insurance, uh, uh, we, uh, we are also we are a, a hub for EP procedure from the other countries, we have people from uh, Libya, from uh, Sudan, right. uh, from Yemen, all the other countries come to Egypt and do their EP procedure uh, uh, with us and also we try as we can to go to the other countries and to uh, do the procedure in their countries and to empower uh, the local uh, programs there. Well, thanks very much for sharing that. And Dr. Ruben, tell us about your situation yeah. in your country. I think so in Tanzania, the situation is not uh, bad. As uh, recently, we have established uh, uh, electrophoric services and uh, we are now doing some procedures. We have cut machine and uh, we are getting uh, visit visitors from uh, Egypt and uh, America come, uh, we do uh, some camp uh, visits with uh, EP cases. Uh, but the, pro the only problem is that uh, we don't have proper fellowship training where, uh, with regard to electrophysiology. And with the initiation fr uh, from uh, AFRA, that's the way forward because with AFRA, the mission is to really get close to other African countries and make sure EP procedures are done as much as possible. So, um, Felix, how can the Heart Rhythm Society help APRA? The big ask is um, to continue to support education initiatives in Africa. 
we will appreciate opportunities for scholarship training uh, based in the United States and also uh, members of HRS community that will be interested in perhaps visiting some of the labs in Africa to give lectures and if possible to do cases with colleagues and also to um, help us in advocating uh, more about availability of arrhythmia services in Africa just to continue to help use raise awareness and I think use a bigger voice of HRS in promoting these initiatives will be helpful. Stay tuned for the AFRA uh, summit in the next HRS in Boston. Oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah. And one more thing is the uh, difference of diseases between uh, Europe and America vis-a-vis -vis African countries. We have a lot of infectious diseases like uh, rheumatic heart disease, which is a very common cause of uh, arrhythmias in Africa. Uh, cardiomyopathies like restrictive ones so even the diversity of diseases do differ so uh, in a way of research and uh, different management approach we can uh, really help uh, most of Africans in that regard. Wonderful all right well thanks again uh, for your yeah. insights this morning and um, yeah we'll do all, all we can thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.